Hey everybody, welcome back to Teal Stone Homestead. My name is Tiffany, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. We talk a lot about rabbits here, as well as other homesteading content, but we do focus heavily on the rabbits. <laughs> I breed silver fox and creme d'argent rabbits, and we use them for a variety of different reasons. We use them for meat, we use them for showing, breeding stock, fertilizer, fur, and I'm sure there's a, a couple of other things that I've like missed out there, but yeah, we use them for a lot of different reasons. Rabbits are one of my favorite animals. They are so versatile and we just love them here. So today's video, I'm going to be focusing kind of on why I chose the Silver Fox and Creme d'Argent breeds. Now, both of the breeds that I raise have a lot of similarities, but we're going to talk about them like one-on-one. -on -one. So we will start with Silver Fox first. So this big guy, <laughs> is Sprig, and he is one of my very favorite rabbits that I have here. He is a first generation teal stone rabbit, and he is our herd sire, and he is also a grand champion, and we just love him so much because he is very, very personable, and yeah, he's probably gonna be here for a lot longer still. As you can see, Sprig here is a very large rabbit, <laughs> so silver foxes, uh, the bucks should be between nine and 11 pounds, and the does should actually be between 10 and 12 pounds, so very large rabbits, very great for commercial purposes like meat. Uh, they are a commercial variety of rabbits, and so they're they're used for meat and um, they typically are very fast growers too. You just have to make sure that you get your rabbits from a reputable breeder uh, because sometimes breeders will sell stock that is a bit too small that they really probably shouldn't be selling. So you should be making sure that your rabbits are hitting five pounds by at least 12 weeks old. And if they're not, you either need to cull super duper hard or you just need to find new breeding stock from more reputable breeders. Sprig is actually on the smaller side for a silver fox buck. He is nine pounds and five ounces so but he has very pretty babies he's got that big old head and we just love him he is he's just a joy to have out there he's just he, we consider him a little bit of a pet uh in the rabbitry so he gets many many ladies out there and yeah he's just loving life <laughs> silver foxes were developed in ohio and so they have this very dense fur and they are very well acclimated to cold weather. So they're actually a very hardy breed when it comes to winter weather. You don't really have to worry about them too, too much when it gets cold outside because they actually prefer it to be a little bit on the colder side. Um, silver foxes should have very dense fur. So uh, it is also longer fur. And they're also the only breed that has what is called a standing coat. So when you brush their fur forward, it sticks up like they've been electrocuted. <laughs> so if fur tanning is something that you're interested in, silver fox fur is probably one of the best furs that you can get just because it's got this really luxurious stand up quality. Your fur is flying everywhere, my guy. These guys are molting because it is getting to be springtime, so fur everywhere. <laughs> Silver foxes are considered an American heritage breed, so uh, it just means that they have a deep history in the United States and they are very well rounded rabbits. They typically have good immune systems, they have very good temperaments, at least they should, like I said. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're scoping out to the right breeder, but they should have very good temperaments and um, They make wonderful mothers. They are just an overall Really sweet rabbit to have in your homestead. Another fun thing about silver foxes that I love Is that they don't just come in black. They actually come in many different colors. They come in chocolate lilac blue ruby eyed white uh tort even if you want to consider the Alaskan red fox a silver fox so they do come in tort um, and then also you can even get them in broken patterns sometimes but the only showable colors uh, are black and chocolate so far um, as of making this video blue is still under development so hopefully we will see blues on the show table eventually they come in so many different colors so they are a very fun breed to have if you want to explore different colors other than just this black He's getting impatient with me. 
Silver fox babies are actually born solid colors. So they start out uh, when they're born, they are solid black or blue or chocolate or lilac or whatever color. And then by the time they are around eight weeks old, they begin to develop silver ticking. And so they should develop nice even silver ticking throughout the body. Silver foxes are growing in popularity. There are so many homesteaders on both YouTube and just in the homesteading communities that have found out that silver foxes are actually a really great breed of rabbit to have. That was me also. I saw silver foxes on YouTube and I just kind of fell in love with them and I've been into silver foxes since 2019. And we have gone to so many shows and met so many awesome people because of them and that's one thing I love about the silver fox community as well the community itself of breeders that are breeding pedigreed rabbits and showing them is actually a very nice community sometimes you get uh, certain breeds that there's people in the clubs or breeders that just don't make it super fun uh, because of their attitudes, but I've not really found that the case with silver foxes. Most people that you will meet are extremely encouraging about the breed, and so it's been very fun to show them and to kind of celebrate each other's wins. It's been a really fun experience. One other thing that I will mention about silver foxes is that I've used them as foster moms for multiple occasions, and they are amazing foster moms. I have never had one reject a litter they're just really, really great with their babies. So they're very attentive. They're an overall amazing breed. So it definitely makes them one of my very favorite breeds of rabbits. A lot of the times on live streams, people ask me, what's my favorite breed of rabbit? And I tell them it's the ones that I have. I have my favorite breeds of rabbits. So I love silver foxes and I love creme d'argents. So let's talk about creams next. So this girl is Conifer and she is one of my up and coming junior cream does. She is very big already, and I'm very excited about how big she is. She's about five months old, I believe, and I just love her. I will be totally transparent with you guys. I actually love my creams just a smidge more than my silver foxes. And one of the main reasons for that is because they really do need help. And so I'm trying to be like one of those breeders that's really kind of pushing them out there and just, I'm, I'm very hyped about them. I love them so much and I love trying to improve things. So when it comes to the creams, there's not a lot of bloodlines out there to work with. So with the ones that we have, it's a lot of fun to me to have a project that I have to breed and cull very, very hard with the babies, just trying to pick out the very best baby for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and all of that. So it's just a very fun project to try to get them out there and improve them because they definitely need it. And I just love them so much. They just, they have my heart. If I didn't mention this before, Conifer here is actually Clove's daughter. And you guys, some of you will know, I, we recently had to uh, call Clove because of some health problems that she was having. And so, uh, it has been such an amazing experience to have conifer. So creme d'argents are also a large breed, but they're just a smidge smaller than silver foxes. Silver foxes are more in line with the size of a New Zealand rabbit, and creams are actually more in line with the size of a Californian. So there's not a whole lot of difference. Bucks are eight to 10 and a half pounds, and does are eight and a half to 11 pounds. So they are just a smidge smaller than silver foxes, but I am still breeding for size for them, and we love seeing those big rabbits out there. Big rabbits, a plus. We still want to see five pounds by at least 12 weeks old. And with Conifer here, she was six and a half pounds by 12 weeks old. So I feel very accomplished there. <laughs> Creme d'Argens were developed in France and they were imported in the United States sometime in the 1920s and Americans really changed them. So Americans started breeding them with like Palominos and larger meat breeds to develop more of this commercial type. And so they, I would still consider them a heritage breed in the United States just because they are so Americanized, uh, but they are a French heritage breed. So they were originally developed in France and then they came over here and Americans made them really big like this. Technically the French pronunciation of creme d'argent is creme d'argent. So 
I can't really say it exactly like a French person would say it because I am from America. So I just say creme d'argent and that usually goes over well. So creme d'argents are very personable and curious. So one thing that I love about them is they're so inquisitive. They almost seem really smart in my opinion. And so they're just, they're very, they want to know what's going on around them. Um, and yeah, they're just very curious and I just love that about them because I like a rabbit that's that's gonna be a little bit more active So that is one of the reasons that I love them so much. So like I said before um, Creme de Argents are actually threatened. So silver foxes are I think in recovery according to the Livestock Conservancy um, They are also considered a rare breed but in recovery. Creme de Argents are considered a threatened breed So more breeders are needed, but not just any breeders though. We want breeders that are going to focus on breeding creams uh, and keeping the integrity of the breed going and breeding for improvement. We don't want people just breeding anything uh, to anything. We want to make sure that these rabbits are improving and thriving in number. So it would be amazing to have more people on the show table breeding creams for improvement and just, you know, seeing more of them out there. Uh, because they really are a wonderful breed and they are very highly underrated. When creme d'argent babies are born, they are pink. And then when they start developing their peach fuzz, they are solid orange. So they, they stay solid orange until six to eight weeks old. And, and by around eight weeks old, you'll start to notice that they also develop silvering, but it's not really silvering. It's more of like a cream ticking. Um, so it should be just like silver foxes. It should be nice and even throughout the body and you should, when you rub their fur forward, you should see that nice bright orange undercoat. So coloring is very important with creme d'argents and they just have the most gorgeous pelts. One of their original uses was actually for fur trimmings. So uh, they are just an amazing breed. I love them. Their fur is just so gorgeous. This is probably my favorite color of rabbit. So I'm actually fine that they just come in this color. I think that this is all they need. They're just so, so pretty. But the babies, you guys, the babies are the absolute cutest. So if you want really cute baby bunnies in your breeding program, I would highly recommend getting creme d'argents because I love the babies so, so much. I get so excited for creme d'argent litters because around the time they are four-ish weeks old, they are at the absolute cutest phase that you will ever see a baby rabbit in. They are so fuzzy and adorable. So I really do enjoy <laughs> watching those babies. Well, you guys, I know that this was more of an educational video, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I just wanted to share my love for creme d'argents and silver foxes because they are some of the best breeds of rabbits. If you are wanting to do homesteading, if you are wanting to breed for meat or fur, or if you want to improve on a breed that there aren't many of, they are amazing and I highly recommend both of them. So guys, if you are enjoying my videos, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Comment down below because that really does boost me in the algorithm, which is what we are trying to accomplish here. And uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already subscribed and we will, we have some cool announcements pretty soon. So I would stick around if I were you. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. No, spring. <laughs> don't do that. Hey, don't. <laughs> Hold still for just a minute. Stop this. <laughs> spring, please. There. No, you're gross. <laughs> I'm gonna put you back for your nasty. <laughs>